guilty. Get going. Fixing the lamp, the plug's busted. Oh. Man. This package came for you. It was in the vestibule. I was just coming home from the How show. How do you know so it's for me? Your name's on it. You feel all right, Mr. Stevens? Yeah, thanks. My, my, you are on edge. Here, let me. Just like a man all thumbs. Never saw one in my life could open a package. Well, look at this. An old shirt. The collar's torn off. That's a gag. How about a guy's shirt? Oh. Aren't you going to answer it? him. Who? Paul, you old gold brick. When did you get in? Well, how long are you going to be in town? Four days. Look, you'll never get a hotel room this time of night. Funk with me. Mary? Well, bring her over. No, you can have the bedroom. I'll hit the sack in the living room. Hey, I got a kitchen, too. My, my landlady. Hold on, she's here right now. An old pal of mine from the army. What? An old pal of mine from the army on his honeymoon. May he come here? Yes, yes, of course. Thanks. She says, okay, where are you? You know the address? Swell. Half hour. Swell. Must be a very good friend. He's a lifesaver. Well, thanks very much. Good night. Well, good night. Hello? Look, I told you before, I don't want any part of it. I'm true. Okay, so I'm yellow. Keep the collar. 
So what? I don't care if the police do get it. No, not in here. I'll come out. No matter how many times I turn it Tristan. down, I just... Miss Tristram, will you do me a favor? Something important's come up and I've got to go out. Will you keep your eyes open for my friends and give them the key? Oh, yes, of course. Tell them to make themselves at home. I'll be back later. All right. Thanks. Hi, Ed. Hi. Hi. Got those pictures with you, Ed? What pictures? You know, the ones you took with that trick camera of yours when we weren't looking. Oh, somebody's been kidding you. Could be. Come on, let's knock off a few beers. Okay. When you pulled out, the boys got a little worried. Especially when you said you had enough for us to get us in trouble. I was sore, that's all. Just talking. Good morning. Oh. Don't do that to me. Sorry, darling. It snapped. So did I. Right out of a wonderful dream. Good one? Oh, the best. About a beautiful girl. I guess I must be in love. <laughs> Silly. You seen Ed yet? No. Ed? What kind of friends do you have? Why? He didn't come home last night. That note you left out there on the table is still there. Well, he's just being considerate. Here, darling. Thanks, baby. See these pictures? Mm-hmm. They're awfully good. He's great with a camera. You aren't so bad yourself. Ed taught me everything I know. You ready, baby? Mm -hmm. Wait till I fix my face. But hurry up, will you? I want to catch the morning sun. Want to leave a note for Ed in case he comes back while we're gone? Sure. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Mail for Mr. Stevens? Yes, sir. And hold it. Oh, very good. Thanks a lot. Gee, look, a quarter. What's a quarter? Carl, oh, we starved and we still have marketing to do, and my feet are killing me. Say, mister, for a quarter, I can find something to be scared of, too. Yeah, me too. Look, I'm petrified. <laughs> All right, everybody get into it. Just one more, Nancy. I hold it now. Hold it. Okay, thanks a lot. Oh, boy. There you are, son. Gee! Oh, I'm going to get the dirt. I'm going to get my daddy. Let's go. Hmm, Ed must be in. His mail's gone. Someone was in here. I heard them. Who was that? Paul, what's going on?
going on? I don't know, but someone was in here, went out through the window. See if any of our things are missing. There doesn't seem to be anything missing. Shall I call the police? No, wait a minute. I don't think this was an ordinary burglar. Paul, I'm worried about Ed. There's something wrong, I feel it. Uh, honey, don't go jumping to conclusions. Let me show you something. Where'd you get these? I found them this morning. They were hidden on a shelf behind some dishes. Some people believe this stuff. But Ed. Ed. Why should he have them? I don't know. Somebody probably stuffed them in his mailbox. Must be. Ed isn't like that. Probably used them to wrap up his garbage. Hello? Hello? Yes, this is Ed Stevens' apartment. Yes, this is Paul Lester. Message from Ed. Is he all right? Good. Where? Elm and Douglas. In 20 minutes. Yeah, we'll be there. Thanks, fella. We're gonna meet Ed at the corner of Elm and Douglas. But why isn't he coming here? I don't know. Maybe he's in some kind of a jam. I'd better go alone. Come in. Good evening. I brought some extra sheets. Oh, thank you. Is uh, Mr. Stevens here? No, he hasn't shown up yet. We just heard from him. I'm on my way to see him. Oh. Mrs. Tristram, would you have dinner with my wife? That's awfully nice of you, but I'm on a diet. Oh, please, I wish you would. Well, I really shouldn't, but I will. Thanks. You know, I've heard of babysitters, but I do believe I'm the first bride sitter in history. <laughs> Can I give you a hand? There, everything's all right. I'll be back soon. Keep a light in the window. Don't get yourself mixed up in anything. I won't. Don't worry. I'll see who it is. Door lock just for luck. You ringing too, D? Yes, uh, I'm looking at Mr. Stevens, Ed Stevens. Oh, he's not at home. Can I be of any assistance? Well, I don't know. I'm from Snap Magazine. We received a letter from Mr. Stevens, special delivery. Said he had some important information for us. What kind of information? I haven't the slightest idea. You a friend of his? Yes, Paul Lester. I'm Larry Mitchell. How do you do? Wonder if you know what Mr. Stevens had in mind. No, I'm afraid not. Well, I'll drop back some other time. Well, I was just going to meet him. Would you care to come along? Sure, glad to. No, thanks. I never use them. Are you from this state? No, just passing through. My wife and I, we're on our honeymoon. Well, how nice. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Oh, now, don't fret, dear. He'll be back soon. Oh, Miss Tristram, the hall telephone. What? The hall telephone. It's ringing. Oh, oh, is it? Could I get it for you? No, you just sit still. I'll answer it.
afraid I can't wait any longer. Sure. I live close by here. Just tell Mr. Seams I dropped in. I'll call him. Nice meeting you. Bye. Bye. I saw him. Oh, she's been awfully nervous ever since you left. But I saw him, I tell you. Did you get a good look at him? No, it was too dark. Mrs. Tristram, thank you very much. I think Nancy ought to rest now. Oh, of course. Good night, dear. In the morning, it'll all be forgotten. Uh, did you see Mr. Stevens? No, he didn't show up. Probably got to drinking with the boys. Well, good night. Thanks for everything. Good night. I feel better now. Good night's rest and you'll be all right. About all, Sergeant. I don't know much about him since we left the Army and this landlady tells me he lost his job. That phone call seemed like a stunt to get me out of the house. It yeah. all adds up to confusion. Maybe it just took a temporary powder. Happens all the time. We drag a river and the guy we're looking for comes up and taps me on the shoulder and asks me what it's about. It can frustrate you. Why should he duck out, though? Well, who knows? Guy out of a job does a lot of funny things. And it's a girl. Look, if I could come up with the answer just like that, I'd knock off tomorrow and go fishing. What happened? In trouble across the street. What is it? What happened, Miss Fisher? I was just sitting down for supper when all of a sudden a great big rock smashes through the window. Oh. It almost killed my little girl. They've killed my husband, and now they're smashing the window. Oh, say, I damn it. Oh, Sergeant Fontelli, this is my wife. How do you do? Hello, Mrs. Lester. Who are they, Sergeant? Fishers. They've been living there for years. Never hurt anyone. Now they don't want them around here anymore. They? Mm -hmm. Who are they? You tell me. What's that about someone killing her husband? Yeah, hit and run driver last week. I better get over there with her. Oh, just a minute. All right. Ran into the Fisher kid the other day. She was on her way home from school. She was bawling. Here's some ice cream for the little girl. Oh, thanks. That'll help. Say, if your friend doesn't show up by tomorrow morning, let me know. I'll put a warrant on him. Go back. All right, thanks, Sergeant. down in a hurry. Paul, what did that detective want? Was it about Ed? I sent for him. Did you tell him about the pamphlets I found? Honey, you don't think Ed was mixed up in anything like that? Well, you know him better than I do. Now, I could use a little air. So could I. I'll get my coat. Honey, what happened to the films I put here? You know, the stuff I shot today? Oh, uh, they're in that top drawer there. Oh. I we might as well drop them off to be printed. There's a little camera shop down the street. Put them in your purse, right? Oh, here's another one. Come on, Al. Hit it over the wall. A low one, Brody, a low one. Uh, he eats low ones. Go on. He's gonna drop the ball. Watch him, he's gonna drop it. Come on. You're loaded with luck. Good evening. Oh, I'm sorry. If it had been a home run, you wouldn't have been sorry. You're so right. When would you like these? Tomorrow night, if possible. Oh, they'll be ready. I'll be here until 11. Name and address, please. Paul Lester. Paul Lester. 531. 531. Parker. Parker. Apartment 2D. 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 That's Mr. Stevens' apartment. Yeah. Did he recommend me? Well, we saw your sign. Do you know Ed? He used to be a very good customer. What do you mean, he used to be? I don't know. He just doesn't come in here anymore. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Look, they slashed your tire. That bunch of kids. It's the third time in a month. What? But why should they do a thing like that? 
My name is Strauss, that's why. You got a spare? Yeah. I'll give you a hand. Oh, that's all right. Where's the jack? Under the seat. Nice neighborhood you have here. It used to be. Well, I hope you don't have any more trouble, Strauss. Good night. Good night. And thanks again. Good night. Good night. Say you're sorry to these folks here. Mind your manners, son. Daddy, dear. It was just an accident. I'm Mrs. Hill. You folks are new in the neighborhood. We're just visiting. I saw you on Stars' camera shop. Yes, we left some film. Why don't you take them up to the drug store on the corner? Why, is the work better up there? Well, it isn't just that. You know. No, I'm afraid we don't know. What's wrong with Strauss? We just don't like to have him around here. Let him move somewhere else of his own sort. Oh, really? You look like the right kind of people. I don't have to tell you any more. No, you don't have to tell us any more. Come on, Nancy. Why must it be like that? Well, I suppose some people can't live without hating. It's the only way they can feel superior. Some people hate because they're stupid. Others just plain vicious. And there's some that hate just because they're told to. Paul. Yeah, honey. You know what? What? I think you're wonderful. You say that just one more time and you'll get yourself a kiss. That might be it. You were getting jittery. Hello? Oh, hello, Sergeant. What is it? Yeah, I'll be down right away. What's the matter? Sergeant Fontelli wants me to come down to the station house right away. That's about it. Joe, hope he's all right. Come on, let's go. Outside, Mrs. Lester. All right. Something the matter with Ed? Come on inside. Sit in the car, honey. How did it happen? Run over by a truck. Already dead. What? See that mark on its neck? That's what killed him. I don't get it. He was murdered. Murdered? I don't feel so good. Yeah, I know. Never gets used to it. Where did it happen? A little while ago, over on the north side. You got any ideas? A couple. Come on, I got something I want to show you. Remember Fisher? Yeah. When we picked up his body, he was holding on to the torn sleeve of the shirt. Striped shirt. Yes. This is it. Pal was wearing it. Come on. Edward Stevens, 
you are now from whence you came. And gathered here, your good friends, to bid you life eternal. May God bless you. Amen. That's what he was. Well, if it did, it should hang. How come the Strauss is here? Probably thought he could pick up some business. Yeah, some nerve. Ed hated him. Wouldn't go into his shop. Strauss likes Ed. Mr. Strauss likes everybody. Friends of Ed's? I guess so. They used to drink with him at the 19th hole. 19th hole. A local country club. Glad to get out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we better start packing right away. Last night when I threw those pamphlets in the drawer in the living room, there was a shirt in it. A shirt? There were several of them. The one in the middle drawer was striped, with part of the sleeve and the collar ripped off. Collar ripped? Somebody broke in here and stole it. And Ed was wearing that same shirt when they found him last night. Frontelli told me that when they picked up Fisher's body, he was clutching a piece of that same shirt in his hand. Then it was Ed who ran down Fisher. Maybe that's why he disappeared. But why does he keep coming back for that shirt? It doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. Because Ed didn't take it. Ed was framed, framed and murdered. And whoever ran down Fisher is in the clear. But why Ed? Why pick on him? I don't know. That magazine. That man from Snap Magazine. Mitchell. Ed had something that he wanted to give him. What do you suppose it was? I don't know. Book, diary, letters. I don't know, but we've got to find out. Paul, let's go away from here. There's nothing you can do. Ed's got some pretty bad marks against him, the way things stand now. Well, let Frontelli handle it. I'm sure you'll get to the bottom of it. No, darling, it doesn't matter if we stay another day or two. I want to go through Ed's things. All right. Where do we start? You take the bedroom and I'll look in the living room. It was delicious, darling. Well, shall we straighten up? You sure tore that living room to pieces. Did you go through those boxes in the closet? Mm-hmm. There's nothing there but old papers and some odds and ends. 
Darling, let's just stack the dishes tonight. You've still got time to make that concert. Trying to get rid of me? Why don't you go with Mrs. Tristram? You've had a rough day. It'll do you good. Oh, I thought maybe we'd go to a movie together. I don't feel like it, baby. Do you mind? No. I guess the honeymoon's over. Don't be silly. Go get dressed. I'll wait up for you. All right, darling. To tell you the truth, anything to get out of this spring cleaning. A guy like Ed Stevens knocked off. The whole thing stinks. I know what I'd do if I was running things. So do you, Bob. What? Run the foreigners out of the neighborhood. All of them. Then you'd be sure to get the one that took care of Ed. Small beer. Sure, Bob. Yeah, but you always told me people like that was yellow. How could yellow... Well, they like... stick together, don't they? Everybody sticks together. Well, they really stick together. That's why they knocked off Ed. It's as plain as a nose on your face. You sure of that? Everybody knows it. It was printed on announcements. Were the announcements printed by the police department? I don't know. Say, who are you, fella? Johnny Law? You got a badge on the cover? Open up. The drinks are on the fat man. I'm a friend of that. You don't talk like him. No? No. Stick to your drink, Roy. You know Ned Long? Well, we were in the service together. How come we haven't seen you here before? Because I haven't been here before. Say, I seen you someplace. I've been someplace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, smart guy, huh? He told you. The waiter at work. For a friend, you don't know so much. You know, I could learn not to like you. Take it easy, Locke. Ed wasn't working. He quit down at the Lawrence machine shop. They put him on a shift with a bunch of foreigners. Chuck the job right in the face. That's right. Spoke right up. That's the kind of men we need. Right, Faso? That's right. It's late, Roy. Well, it's you. Beat it. You gotta get up early tomorrow. Get lost. Faso, tell her you lost. You'll miss another day at the shop, and we need the money. Look. You let me alone, or you're gonna get it. You wouldn't dare. You're in enough trouble already. Stay out. It's just bowl and chain. Pour me another drink, Fatso. Hi, Chuck. Hi. Chuck? Seen this yet, Bob? I don't know. Haven't I seen you somewhere before, mister? He's a friend of Ed's. They were in the army together. Oh. Yeah, I saw you at the funeral. That's right, sure. Put a head on it for the gentleman. Sure. Any friend of Ed's got a drink with us. What did you say your name was? I didn't. Paul Lester. Mine's Hill. Shake. Nothing like a concert for relaxation. Yes, I enjoyed it very much. Oh, would you mind stopping in the camera shop? Oh, what is it? Would you mind stopping in here a minute? It'll save Paul a trip. Oh. Of course, yes. Hello. Hello. I believe you have some films for Lester. Yeah, I know. Where's Harry? He's in the back somewhere. Oh. How cute. Oh, yes, it's the Fisher baby. Of course, that was taken when she was just a year old. I'm sorry, Mrs. Lester, they aren't back yet. Oh, that's too bad. When will they be ready? Not ready? Hello. Hello. Oh, hello, Harry. Are you sure, Ralph? They should be back. Let me take a look. You weren't at the concert? I had other things on my mind tonight. Oh. How's your husband? Oh, I'm very tired, I'm sure. Oh, here. We're right here, Ralph. Yeah, I guess I didn't see him. Good. How much are they? Two dollars even. Thank you. Good night, Harry. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Come in again. Saving this or 
thrown it away. Come on, let's take a walk. I didn't do nothing. Let me along. Insured? For sure, why? He was just getting ready to find out. Winding up for the big picture. What's the idea, Teddy? Have I ever done anything to hurt you? Leave me alone. Why'd you want to break my window? Leave me alone, you hear? What do you think I got to do with you? Go tell my pa. Go on. See if he cares. I think I'll haul him down to juvenile court. Leave me alone. I didn't do nothing. Wouldn't do any good. Yeah. Go on, beat it. Father's worse than he is. What can you do? Have you seen that circular? Yeah. I heard Father Dunn call a protest meeting. Is that right? Yeah. Father's burned up about that circular. So long, Harry. See you around. So long, Mike. Thanks for the window. Sorry, Mrs. Lester. What do you want? I'm sorry to bother you. It's those pictures. Have you looked at them? No. You'd see that I was right. Strauss made a mistake. He gave you the wrong ones. Oh, well, I'll give them back to you. But our name's on the envelope. Just a second, and I'll look at Don't them. Don't bother. Give them to me. I'll see that yours are delivered. But I'd better look at Give them to me, do you hear? I have to have them. Have to have what? Well, it seems What's that the trouble. There's a mistake, Mr. Lester. These pictures, I picked them up at Strauss's. He says he gave us someone else's by mistake. What's all the excitement? I'll deliver yours in the morning. Sure. Well, let's see how good Strauss's work really is. These are mine. Not bad. Look at that detail. Yours? It's my mistake, then. Yeah, it seems that way. I'll I'll check again. Sure. He didn't want me to look at them. A dumb kid. Paul, where were you? I decided to ask some questions about Ed. Hey, these aren't mine. Nancy, look. Ed with those guys and that drunk from the bar. Your friend Ed with them? Wait a minute. That shirt wasn't all they were looking for. They were after these pictures. That roll of film must have been in that drawer. We took them by mistake. Baby, that was no mistake. Ed must have shot those. Okay, here it is. Elkton 409. Elkton 409? Who's that? Snap Magazine. Man, Mitchell. Ed was going to give them those pictures, an expose of the whole mess. I saw this man pushing his wife around when she said he was in some kind of trouble. I think I'll have a talk with him. Paul, that's for the police. Yeah. There's more chance of his talking to me than to a policeman. Darling, please be careful. Sure. And you keep your door locked. You draw men like honey draws flies. You're hitched to a very jealous character. Excuse me. Strauss camera shop. Oh, hello, Mrs. Lester. Ralph was there? I'll be right over. I'm for peaceful methods myself. But when I hear of a good American like Ed being lynched... Where's Carter? Well, it does something to me. Mace is right. Now, you know how they stick together. It's really cooking, just like Philip said it would. Yeah. Come in. 
I saw the films Ed took. What? Where are they? I had them right in my hand. Where are they? I almost got them in the shop. Then Strauss walked in and he gave them to the people. Their name is Lester. They're friends of Ed's. So I sneaked up there, only they caught me. Why did you go up there? Why did you hit me? Because you showed yourself. And you'll get more if you don't watch your stuff. You better tell Phillips about this right away. Yeah. Go out and tell Patsy what happened. Have him call Phillips and come back and tell me what he says. Go! I don't like it. Go out and tell the boys to take it easy. They'll call a meeting and figure things out. Yeah. Don't get too steamed up, fellas. Just hold it down. You're getting yellow. You're drunk. Go home. Who's oh, drunk? Go home, I said. Okay, I'll have one drink and then I'll go home. Just one. I'll make that a double. Good luck. Well, you're still talking. It'll ruin me if those pictures get out. You? What about me? What about my gas station? Phillips has got to do something about it. Why don't you catch on, Ed was taking pictures of us? Why didn't I catch on? Why didn't anybody catch on? You talk too much, Mace. Did you get him? Yeah, Fatso talked to him. He said he'd take care of it. He'd better. You don't look too happy. Oh, shut up. Listen, you're in enough trouble already. Cut it out. Sit down. to see a woman slapped. Get out or I'll call a cop. Remember Ed Stevens? I don't remember anything. I've got nothing to tell you. You're afraid of your husband? You said you saw him hit me. Yes, I am afraid of him. I want you to take a look at this picture, Mrs. Locke. Tell me about your husband. Maybe I can help you. Tell you what? Now, for the last five years, he hasn't drawn a sober breath. How he beats me to prove that he's better than I am. He's a man. Now, he throws out the few flowers I pick. Says they stink up the house. Oh, he can't keep a job. Always oh, blames it on to the kikes and the wops. Never on to himself. Oh, he's broken me. Torn me to pieces. Is that what you want me to tell you? Him. I've never needed him. But he won't let me go. He won't let me go. In the barn tonight, you said he was in trouble. What kind of trouble? I have no squealer. I can help you. Leave me alone. All right, but this is your chance. All right, Mrs. Locke. Wait. He's a murderer. Just the same as if he did it in cold blood. 
Go on, Mrs. Locke, tell me. It was a week ago Wednesday. I remember because it was my birthday. About 10 o'clock that night, I scrimped to get a cake. That husband of mine didn't even come home. I went to get him. He was so drunk, I was scared to speak to him. He and Mace were trying to get Ed to come along and do something. Ed didn't want to go. He said he was through with all that kind of stuff. I didn't know what they meant then. They said something about running the Jews out of the neighborhood. I left for home. Saw a car. It was Mace's car. It was parked near the corner. I couldn't understand why. Then I knew Mr. Fisher was about to cross the street. Then Ed jumped out of the car and ran to Mr. Fisher. It was nothing but murder. And your mace lock? It was awful. It was awful. I promise you, Mrs. Locke, you'll be protected. Oh, yeah? But who's going to protect you? Put up your hands. Don't be crazy, Locke. Put them up. Get over there. You too. Locke, I'll make a deal with you. You got nothing I want. I got a picture. A picture of you setting fire to an altar. You're lying. Ask your wife. He's right, boy. I saw it. Give it. It's in my pocket. You. Bring it to me. Sorry, Mrs. Locke. I'm, I'm sick. Get in. These are dynamites. You'd better be careful, Mrs. Lester, and hide them. And we'll turn it over to this fellow Mitchell tomorrow. I'm worried about Paul. I think I know where he is. Where? The 19th hole. It's a saloon. I never go there myself. Even if I did, they wouldn't serve me. But I'll look in, and if he's there, I'll send somebody in to get him. Oh, thank you very much. Bye. Oh. Maybe you better call Sergeant Fintelli and tell him to come down to the 19th hole right away. Better hide those. Emergency. It's a party line, can't you hear? That's telling good, Chuck. Papa. 
operator. Get me the police station, please. Uh, 42nd Precinct. Hello? Uh, Sergeant Fontelli, please. Oh. Well, then, as soon as he does, will you give him this message? Tell him that Mr. Strauss is at the 19th hole and wants him to come there at once. It's important. This is Mrs. Lester. Thank you. Oh, Mrs. Trist, why heavens, child. Well, you're all wrought up. Now, what you need is a nice cup of tea. You come along with me. What's the idea? This is Lester. I'll tell you about it later, but he's got to film. Films? Sit down, Mr. Lester. May we have the films? What films? He's got them. Let me stay out of this. You hear those films? I haven't got them. He's lying. Maybe this will help your memory. Look in his pocket. You ain't so good looking, Roy. Too much talk. A little accident like we give his friend. Shut up! Or what if he does know? One more chance. Those films. I burned them. His wife's got them. Got a tire iron in the car? Yeah. We might need it. As a convincer. Yeah. Relax, Lester. Relax. Well, if it isn't my old friend Strauss who are you looking for? Nobody, nobody. Well, come on in. Let's have a little drink. I don't want you to be lonesome. Oh, no, thanks. I have to go. Oh, come on in. I'll buy. Come on. Hey, Fatso. Set him up for me and my old friend, Strowski. Well, well, Mr. Strowski. We never did have the pleasure of acquaintance here before. Louis, champagne for the gentleman. What do you have with you, champagne? Caviar? Yeah, caviar. I just came in to see if Paul Lester is here. Well, maybe he is here. He's probably in the back room having a drink with the boys. Come on, let's go see. Yeah, we got a private room for our special guest. Mr. Strasky. Oh, uh, serve the drinks in the private room, Jane. Gentlemen, a very special guest. Mr. Strowski. Now, what are you doing here? He's a friend of ours. Why shouldn't he be here? Oh, no, Ralph. Yeah, it's true. He told me that if I helped put you out of business, he'd give me a job at twice the pay. For money, Ralph? <laughs> My competitor. Sit down, Mr. Strauss. We want to talk to you. Being that you and Mr. Lester are such good friends. I brought a drink for our special guest. Should I serve your royal highness? Slap him down. Slap him down. I'm sorry, Harry. What are you sorry about? Nothing. I never did like the idea of a pup like you hanging around. Before the interruption, we were talking about pictures, remember? I remember. Well, I want those pictures, and I want them tonight. Well, I got the pictures, and the negatives, too. You're lying. Ralph. Didn't you try to get them for Mrs. Lester? Yeah. We know that. She came to the store and gave them to me. I have them. Take me to the store and I'll prove it. What can we lose? OK, he's yours. Let's go. You'll lay off him? If we get the pictures, it's a deal. You'll get him. You can bet on that. Yeah. What good are the pictures if he's around knowing about Fisher and Ed? Wait a minute. Ah, by God. Quiet. Man's got a right to defend himself. Well, Mrs. Locke told me that you killed Ed and Fisher, but I knew it before. So? Brontelli told me. Ah, he's just trying to stall. Stay out of this. 
I'll do the talking from now on. We vote. You. Guilty. You. Guilty. You. Guilty. You. Guilty. You. Both. Guilty. Unanimous. You see, it isn't smart to know too much, Mister. It isn't smart at all. Ed found that out. Fatso. Set him up. Drinks around, buddy. Why don't you get some sense and go back where you came from? The next block where I was born? My name is Strauss. Harry Strauss. He'll kill me. I get the pictures. Where are you? I'll break your neck, Strauss. Wait at the block? We'll get there first. Why are you, Teddy? Where are you? Where are you? Here, this way. I'm waiting for you. This way, Hill. This way. Segment of warfare. Strauss is coming with us. Oh, poor Strauss. He had such a nice business, too. Hey, wait a minute. What are you going to do to Strauss? Are you worried about him, Ralphie? No. No, but I thought that... Just leave the thinking to me. Let's go. Gun. What's that? Smell it? It's acetic acid. It must be in the store room. Locked. Wait a minute, I got a key here. Harry! Bill! Why? Printing press of yours, Carter. You're quite an author. Man's got a right to say what he wants. Yeah, like yelling fire in a crowded theater. There's a law against that. Sergeant, I'll tell you anything you want to know. It wasn't my fault. It was Phillips. He said we could build a political party. He said we'd start small, but 
There'd be dough behind us, plenty of it. Phillips, that cheap ward healer, is he back again? Give us a break, Sergeant. We'll make it worth your while, Sergeant. Come in. Brush him in the way. Yes, sir. Come on, you three. Tell me your rules, will you? <coughs> hey, Harry, what'd they do to you? <laughs> Did you see the other guy? <laughs> Take it easy on Ralph. I think the kid learned by now. Hey, you want to see a doctor? Doctor? I never felt better in my life. Feel better now. Yes, thank you, Miss Tristan. Well, good night, dear. Good night. Mrs. Lester? Yes. I'm Mr. Mitchell of Snap Magazine. I know your husband. Your door was open, so I took the liberty of walking in. Mr. Mitchell, I can't tell you how glad I am to see you. We discovered what Mr. I know. The picture. But how did you know? From your husband. You see, the murder of Mr. Stevens is a page one story. I was on my way up here when I ran into Mr. Lester. Well, why didn't he come with you? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm here on a double mission. Not only for the pictures, but to bring you to him. Where is he? At that cafe down the street, the 19th hole. Now, if you'll be kind enough to let me have them. You see, we've reserved the feature space for the article. The magazine goes to press tonight. You don't know how glad I'll be to get rid of them. Just a second, I'll get my coat. Hey, Frontelli. Yeah? Who's this guy Phillips they were talking about? Well, Phillips? Yeah, smart operator. Sounds crazy to me. He's crazy. He's power crazy. Maybe he's trying to get even for something he's burned up about. Like how? Well, he... Works on a lot of little guys that have got gripes, too. One fellow because he wants to be a big shot, another who's in it for the dough, and maybe a guy who can't hold on to his job. There are a lot of them. This Phyllis must have been knocked dizzy by a detective magazine once. How do you mean? Well, he likes to use phony names, aliases. I pinched him for it. Didn't make it stick in court, though. It's a free country, you know. Sorry I'm so jumpy, but there's been so much trouble. Those foreigners. Foreigners? Oh, yeah. You know, rumors. Mr. Mitchell, what's the telephone number of Snap Magazine? What? Well, phone number? Oh. Ashfield, 9103. Who are you? Give me those pictures. No. You hear me? Give me those pictures! So long, Fontelli. Lieutenant Meehan, it's Frontelli speaking. You send the wagon to 531 Parker, back alley. Phillips. <laughs> yeah, he was playing Hitler, but in the wrong precinct. All right, I'll stick around. You all right, Mrs. Lester? Should be all right. I'll see you in a second. Mm. Good, Good night. Good night, Sergeant. You get home and watch. 
wash those dishes right now. See, I want to play. Right now.